Welcome to Absurdist Asylum. This is it. It's the end of an era. It's the end of the Echo. Thank goodness. Uh, unfortunately, this mini-sode, it's about 15 minutes long. There was a bit of an Echo. I did all the editing I could to get rid of it. Did a decent job, if I say so myself. But it's still there. Um... I have some new equipment, so it shouldn't be an echo again. Uh, repeat, there will be no echo in future episodes. I appreciate you guys sticking around, and thanks for coming by the asylum. Enjoy this mini-sode about The Devil's Candy, starring Ethan Embry. Oh my goodness. Alright, so that fucking movie. Hold on, before we get started. Uh, welcome to the Absurdist Asylum Devil's Candy mini-sode, I think is probably the best way to describe it. Uh... Mini, mini to, to, to lay it down, uh, the fiancé and I, Jason, went and saw The Devil's Candy in the uh, SIE Film Center in Denver, um, which was awesome. We literally had the theater to ourselves except for one creepy old guy, except we'll get to that. And Jeff, our, our, um, our, our co-host Hermit, uh, decided he was going to watch it on video on demand. Instead of coming up and hanging out with us, which is fine. We'll get, we'll, it's just fine. We'll let that be. Even though BDs was offered. But, uh... Ugh, I so, know. I know. So, I, the, the devil's candy. I, I, what did you think, Jeff? It wasn't, did it... Let's just say, you, you mentioned it on our Can't Hardly Wait episode. We named it after Ethan Embry's movie. And, um... What did you think? Did it live up to your expectations? You were pretty excited. Well, so far... Um, from all the movies I said I wanted to see, this one is the only one that really, like, actually has lived up to my expectations. So, yeehaw, Ethan Embry's awesome, Sean, Sean Byrne, or Byrne, or director guy, awesome. Everything was awesome, and I, I miss movies like this, like... This is the type of shit that I used to like seek out at the at the the video store, you know, if you remember those. I do so. remember video stores. Now, now you can't see it, but Lindsay made a little cring, cringe face when you said this is the type of movie you miss. But I hear what you're saying because it did felt feel like it had a lot of the horror movie tropes in it. Like it felt very familiar, but it was a very new story. Exactly, and it's like so many movies. So horror these days, if it's going into a wide release, like so, this is definitely not a wide release. Like this is a like a modest release. Any sort of wide release horror movie is not. I I don't even want to call it a horror movie because it's, it's it's some shit genre that has been tailored like. I don't even like everybody always loves the conjuring. I like it's like the most average thing on the planet. Like horror in mainstream theaters is pretty much just non-existent and I hate it because they're all the exact same and they all could be good if they were to just take time and like establish shit, like establish your characters and this especially um I like the atmosphere like that's something nobody even gives a shit about anymore is the atmosphere like even something as good as get out get out's atmosphere kind of kind of subpar but something like this man like the way that it is shot the fucking sound design like the music cues everything is exactly what i love about not only horror but just movies and i'm glad that this exists and um, I uh, hope that I hope Ethan Embry does more stuff like this, and I hope the director does many more things of this nature as well. Absolutely. Now, one thing that you mentioned, um, you kind of gave Get Out and this a comparison, and we've both seen Get Out since the same episode. Can't hardly wait. Uh, one thing that I thought this did and Get Out did at just uh. I thought Get Out almost did this better than The Devil's Candy was build tension. Uh, just because yeah, Get Out was an amazing, like, there, don't get me wrong, there was tension all over Devil's Candy. But Get Out did an amazing job of making everything look 
on the surface, and I don't want to get too far into Get Out, but it did right. a great job of making everything look on the surface very normal, but feeling very wrong. Well, and that's where we disagree, Jason, <laughs> because Get Out was was great. It was a great movie. Um, it was severely lacking in atmosphere and tension. I never once felt like any of those characters were actually in danger of anything except except for plot devices. And I think that it was very... It played it very safe, which is the most insulting thing to me, is when something is so good, but it's safe. Still, Get Out's awesome. Okay, that, that, so wait. But, but Devil's Candy, man, like, doesn't play it safe. Is not afraid to take its time. It doesn't. It doesn't rely on jump scares, which like thank you because Get Out did the same same thing. Fucking jump scares. Like just because you play a loud noise after it's dead silent doesn't mean you're being creepy. It just means you're obnoxious. You're you're on the same level as when my neighbor slams their door. That's that's the level of terror you're you're establishing. But Devil's Candy is much more like. I mean, I don't want to sound like a pretentious douche, but it's much more, like, cerebral. It's much more, like, interpretive. It is all about the atmosphere and the characters, all of which were great. And I feel like I've bashed Get Out a lot, and I don't want to do that because I like Get Out. Yeah, let's no, not let's get, get it twisted. Get out. Um, <laughs> now, you, you, you 100% guaranteed me that Lizzie was going to hate this movie to the point where... I was almost concerned about taking her to this movie, and I made her watch the trailer before we walked in. And after she watched the trailer, I was like, yeah, what was Jeff even thinking? Like, she was into the trailer. She liked the movie. As far as the conclusion, uh, if you say anything that's spoilery, babe, just say spoilers. For Get Out? For No, for The Devil's Candy. Oh, okay. So first off, I love jump scares. I like that, like... But it has to be a good, like, you're not going to expect it, and then all of a sudden, bam, there it is. I don't like the, na 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 the lead up to it, and then there it is. Like, that's not scary, okay? I agree with you on that. However, I would have liked to have one almost pee-my-pants moment. Like, I love horror movies, but I hate when they, like, lead up to a free... And, the, that's the thing I had with the music, okay? When they let up with the music, you knew something was going to happen. I hate that. I absolutely hate it when they fucking do that. Because it's like, alright, well I know something is happening, so it's either going to be really good or it's going to be a fucking letdown. And a lot of the times, it's been a letdown. But with Devil's Candy, like, I was like on, like, not on the edge of my seat, but I was like... I was definitely gripping Jason's hand, like, okay, all right, all right. And I'm, like, talking to myself it, during this movie, like, all right, if you don't fucking do what I think you should do, I'm I'm literally going to walk out of this theater. But, I like, I was really happy with the result regardless of, like... So, so I, speaking of the theater, I mentioned this a second ago. We had the theater at the SIE Film Center, which I'm sure you know isn't that big. It's what, a, right. maybe... Maybe 60 seater, maybe 50, maybe even less. Yeah. But um, we had the two middle seats, and then right before the movie starts, some old dude who, and I shit you not, was playing loud radio over his headphones as he walked into the theater and sat down. And up until the moment, the very moment that the actual movie started, he fucking had his headphones on. And then turned it off. Like, I was worried I was going to have to be like, dude, you're going to leave those on the whole time? And then he fucking turned them off right at the movie start. And I didn't hear a fucking peep from the guy afterwards. And it made the tension in the back of my mind, like, 15% higher. That's that's actually, because I was going to say, are you sure it just wasn't the creepy dude from the movie? <laughs> that it was, exists he was much in older real life. He had a much bigger beard, but <laughs> man, it definitely it messed with uh, my head first, at least. And I asked Lizzie afterwards, and she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is almost everybody I know that has gone to 
the C Film Center or SIE Film Center uh, has told me that there's been a creepy old guy in like <laughs> in the theater. So oh, that's either the somebody guy. probably the same guy, some Howard Hughes motherfucker that has all the money <laughs> in the world. <laughs> no, but like I was a little like what the fuck at the end because I was like all right, all right, so yeah, spoilers. We're gonna yeah. get into the end right now. Spoilers. Okay, spoilers. so I was a little like, "What the fuck?" at the end because I was expecting. All right, you're gonna see police cars show up, and no, not even one fucking police car. Congratulations, was, our honestly, fucking all right. system. So you but, mentioned the movie taking its time. There's a. It's an hour and twelve minutes with the credits. So it. I mean, it didn't do much taking its time, but it also didn't feel rushed at all which is kind of strange like it felt like uh, as far there as were runtime some parts, goes i would say might have been rushed as far as runtime goes it felt like a great <coughs> movie to me because i i have too much shit to do like you yeah. give me that story and get it to me good so, yeah and th- so this is a this is a perfect example of the writer knowing what they're doing because the same guy that directed it also wrote it so it's not a situation where somebody is directing somebody else's script or something like that. So, like, this is something where he knew exactly what beats he wanted to hit in the movie. So, it's a lot... It's, it's like, a lot easier to do, like, a, like, tight, concise story if you're also directing it. Because you can write with the intention of directing it so you kind of have more control over the layout. Because most movies, especially today... Um, they just, especially comedies, for whatever reason, they get so masturbatory of their own jokes, and they just leave the fucking camera on too long, and each scene goes on like ten minutes longer than it should. I'm looking at you, Ghostbusters, you (laughs) fuckers. Um, but anyway. The new one? Of course. The new one. Yeah. The new one's a piece of shit. Anyway. Um, but, so, uh... In, in this, though, it was just – it knew what it wanted to be. It was like boom, boom, boom. The reason it uh, – because I've, I've seen you know movies shorter than this that felt longer than this because it's not necessarily about the length. It's how you use the length. Um, <laughs> use the length. <laughs> you already used that joke before. Boo. Did I use that Boo. same thing? Yeah, it's what you tell yourself when you cry at night. Boo. Oh. So anyways, anyway, so yeah, it's it, it they used it right, and and so it there there just wasn't any excess because there didn't need to be, and like this isn't the kind of movie that 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 should be overdeveloped. Like if anything, underdeveloping it makes it better. Like I like movies that have ambiguous endings where you don't actually know how they end. I love that shit because it's so much more interesting to do that than just a concrete, like, okay, they're all saved or okay, they all died or whatever boring shit happens in most movies. Yeah. So I'll I'll tell you the, where I agree with you and where I disagree with you. I'll agree with you because it did leave it very open ending. Like their house was still on fucking fire when the credits rolled. Yep. Like, uh, it left a very ambiguous ending, but the the part that I wish had a little more exposition was I wanted to know where uh, Ray, right, the big guy, uh, yeah. where and why and how he got this guitar, what makes it so special to him. Well, I don't know what the that specific guitar was, but... It was just a plot device because he was playing the music to drown out the voices. I get that. I get that. But I want to know why it wasn't a guitar as opposed to... Or why it was a guitar as opposed to anything else that makes loud noises. Well, because see, but, a, a, but fucking... it, a guitar is more pleasant. I mean, <laughs> first <laughs> off, like, would you rather listen to a guitar or would you rather put a bunch of glass in your blender for 24 hours a day? Like, I imagine it's not much more... Simple than that, but it's also it doesn't it like. It, I guess I guess it doesn't require that much. It was I, just I, something yeah. that, as somebody who was a guitar owner, and I remember how I got my first guitar. Maybe it's something 
that uh, I wanted to know just because it might have struck a chord. Oh! <laughs> oh, boo. That wasn't on purpose, boo. but it was beautiful. It was really bad. You should you should retire. I, Jeff, never. Not at your request. Says the man who used the same joke. I didn't know I used the same joke. That's how terrible I am. Yeah. And you don't even fucking smoke weed. At least all my bad jokes are original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. They're I guess, not, you, I guess not, you have. Though. Yeah, they're, they're not. You should. <laughs> Just, this is all lies. Uh, fair enough. Well, uh, at around 15 minutes, you want to close us out there, friend? Yeah, I mean, I just think uh, um, everybody should uh, see Devil's Candy. It's definitely how movies and horror movies are supposed to be made. Um, it's We've definitely gone away from how a story is told and, and what horror actually is. Um, and Devil's Candy is sort of a return to that. Um, not that it's like the first thing in a long time to do that, but it is um, just one of few that is, is taking us back to where we need to be. Um, I'm sure most people, if you're into the conjuring and rings and things of that nature, this is not for you. Uh, Ethan Embry's awesome. Uh, and uh, uh, last thing, too, I mean, I don't know when this is going to be up, but, like, if you want to see this movie, see it in the theater like Jason did or watch a video on demand like I did. Don't be a fucking asshole and pirate a movie like this because a movie like this, it, its success is 100% dependent on how many people actually pay you know, like currency to see it. Um, so if you have any interest in this at all, pay to see it. Don't be a dick shit and pirate it. Um, and if you don't want to see it, then don't see it. It's that simple. If you want to see it, pay for it. If you don't want to see it, don't see it. And then never talk to me if you don't want to see it. <laughs> you just read my mind. And don't see it and don't talk to us. Lizzie, exactly. your thoughts? Um, well, obviously, you know, it's a... It's a great movie. Even Jeff didn't hate it, and he hates most things. So, um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic, and definitely go see this fucking movie. Listen, folks, it's an hour and 12 minutes with the credits, and the credits is a Metallica song. So... I just want to... Just a quick correction. It's an hour and 20 Jason. Okay. It's an hour and twenty minutes. All right. With so the maybe, maybe, maybe I misspoke, and it's an hour and twelve without the credits. We didn't stay for all of the credits. But it's not long. It's not boring by any sense of the term, and it's actually pretty great. Uh, all three things have been said about my dick. What up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, two out of three, maybe. I'm not so sure. I'm From out of left field, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Hey, uh, Je Jeffy throwing thanks shade. Thanks for tuning into the asylum. Uh, mini sode. We'll see if we can do some more of these. <laughs> Ethan Embry hit us up at Facebook Absurdist Asylum, Twitter Absurdist Asylum, Google at Absurd Asylum at gmail.com. Uh, we're out. Peace.